Hearken, O ye people of my church, saith the voice of him who dwells on high, whose eyes are upon all men. Yea, verily I say, hearken ye people from afar, and ye that are upon the islands of the sea, listen together. For verily the voice of the Lord is unto all men, and there is none to escape. And there is no eye that shall not see, neither heart that shall not be penetrated. And the voice of warning shall be unto all people by the mouths of my disciples whom I have chosen in these last days. And they shall go forth, and none shall stay them, for I the Lord have commanded them. Behold, this is mine authority, and the authority of my servants, and my preface unto the book of my commandments, which I have given them to publish unto you, O inhabitants of the earth. Of the world's multitude of books, one stands uniquely alone as a volume of revelations from God to man received in our time. The Doctrine and Covenants of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints contains revelations given to the prophet Joseph Smith with additions by his successors in the presidency of the church. It is the only book on earth with a preface composed by the God of heaven. It contains the spoken words of angels and the written voice of the Lord in our day. In these revelations, one sees the restoration and unfolding of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the ushering in of the dispensation of the fullness of times. A young man named Oliver Cowdery was present when one of these revelations, section 13, was given. Those were days never to be forgotten. To sit under the sound of a voice dictated by the inspiration of heaven awakened the utmost gratitude of this bosom. Day after day, I continued uninterrupted to write from his mouth as he translated the Book of Mormon. After writing the account given of the Savior's ministry, we only waited for the commandment to be given, arise and be baptized. This was not long desired before it was realized. On a sudden, as from the midst of eternity, the voice of the Redeemer spake peace to us, while the veil was parted, and the angel of God came down clothed with glory and delivered the anxiously looked for message, the keys of the gospel of repentance. What joy, 
What wonder, what amazement. While the world was racked and distracted, while millions were groping as the blind for the wall, and while all men were resting upon uncertainty as a general mass, our eyes beheld, our ears heard. The angel's voice, though mild, pierced to the center. Upon you, my fellow servants, in the name of Messiah, I confer the priesthood of Aaron which holds the keys of the ministering of angels and of the gospel of repentance and of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. And this shall never be taken again from the earth until the sons of Levi do offer again an offering unto the Lord in righteousness. We listened, we gazed, we admired. It was the voice of an angel from glory. It was a message from the Most High. And as we heard, we rejoiced, while his love enkindled upon our souls, and we were wrapped in the vision of the Almighty. In September of 1831, the prophet Joseph Smith moved his family here to the home of John Johnson in Hiram, Ohio. This home is often referred to as the birthplace of the Doctrine and Covenants. For it was here in November of 1831 that a conference of the church was held where it was determined that the prophet should prepare the revelations he had received thus far for publication. At that time, he indicated their importance to the church and its members. These revelations, now to be printed, are the foundation of the church in these last days and of benefit to the world. They show that the keys of the mysteries of the kingdom of our Savior are again entrusted to man and that the riches of eternity are within the compass of all those who are willing to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The conference voted they prized these revelations to be worth to the church, the riches of the whole earth, temporally speaking. A number of revelations were published in Zion Independence, Missouri in 1833, under the title, A Book of Commandments for the Government of the Church of Christ. As the Lord continued to communicate with his servants, an enlarged compilation was published two years later in Kirtland, Ohio. To this publication in 1835, the written testimony of the Twelve Apostles was attached. We therefore feel willing to bear testimony to all the world of mankind, to every creature upon the face of the earth, that the Lord has borne record to our souls through the Holy Ghost shed forth upon us, that these commandments were given by inspiration of God and are profitable for all men and are verily true. The early 1830s was a period of great revelation in the church to lay the foundation of the Lord's work in these last days. Sixteen sections of the Doctrine and Covenants were revealed here in the Johnson home. Forty-nine more were revealed in other parts of northern Ohio. On February 16, 1832, Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon were translating the Bible in an upper room of this home when they received section 76 known as the vision. Nothing could be more pleasing to the saints upon the order of the kingdom of the Lord than the light which burst upon the world through this vision. It is a transcript from the records of the eternal world. The sublimity of the ideas, the purity of the language, the scope are so much beyond the narrow-mindedness of men that every honest man is constrained to exclaim, It came from God. By the power of the Spirit, our eyes were opened and our understandings were enlightened so as to see and understand the things of God. We beheld the glory of the Son on the right hand of the Father and received of His fullness. And now, after the many testimonies which have been given of Him, 
This is the testimony, last of all, which we give of him, that he lives. For we saw him even on the right hand of God, and we heard the voice bearing record that he is the only begotten of the Father. On Sunday, April 3rd, 1836, one week after the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, Joseph and Oliver had partaken of the Lord's Supper. We retired to the pulpit, the veils being dropped, and bowed ourselves in solemn and silent prayer. After we had risen from prayer, the veil was taken from our minds, and the eyes of our understanding were opened. We saw the Lord standing upon the breastwork of the pulpit before us, and under his feet was a paved work of pure gold in color like amber. His eyes were as a flame of fire. The hair of his head was white like the pure snow. His countenance shone above the brightness of the sun, and his voice was as the sound of the rushing of great waters. After this vision closed, the heavens were again opened unto us, and Moses appeared before us, and committed unto us the keys of the gathering of Israel. After this, Elias appeared, and committed the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham. After this vision had closed, another great and glorious vision burst upon us, for Elijah the prophet, who was taken to heaven without tasting death, stood before us and said, The time has fully come to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers, lest the whole earth be smitten with a curse. Therefore the keys of this dispensation were committed into our hands. Brother Wood's house was burned to the ground last night. Their youngest son, already ill, has become worse. I cannot describe the mood of the saints. Where is the protection of the law? Where is the protection of the Lord? We pray daily for your release. Joseph and four of his brethren had been confined in this crowded, cold, unsanitary cell for over four months. As they continued to receive discouraging reports about the suffering of the saints, Joseph was led to cry to the Lord from the depths of his soul. That prayer and the answer of the Lord are recorded in sections 121 and 122 of the Doctrine and Covenants. O oh God, where art thou? And where is the pavilion that covereth thy hiding place? How long shall thy hand be stayed? And thine eye, yea, thy pure eye, behold from the eternal heavens the wrongs of thy people and of thy servants. And thine ear be penetrated with their cries. Remember thy suffering saints, O our God. And thy servant shall rejoice in thy name forever. My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine afflictions shall be but a small moment, and then if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high. If thou art called to pass through tribulation, and if thou shouldst be cast into the pit, 
or into the hands of murderers, and the sentence of death passed upon thee. If thou be cast into the deep, if the billowing surge conspire against thee, if fierce winds become thine enemy, if the heavens gather blackness, and all the elements combine to hedge up the way, and above all, if the very jaws of hell shall gape open the mouth wide after thee, know thou, my son, that all these things shall give thee experience, and shall be for thy good. The Son of Man hath descended below them all. Art thou greater than he? Therefore hold on thy way, and the priesthood shall remain with thee. Therefore fear not what man can do, for God shall be with you forever and ever. John Taylor was an eyewitness to the martyrdom of the prophet Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram. Elder Taylor wrote of these events as recorded in section 135 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more save Jesus only for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. In the short space of 20 years, he has brought forth the Book of Mormon, which he translated by the gift and power of God, and has been the means of publishing it on two continents, has sent the fullness of the everlasting gospel which it contained to the four quarters of the earth, has brought forth the revelations and commandments which compose this Book of Doctrine and Covenants, and many other wise documents and instructions for the benefit of the children of men. And like most of the Lord's anointed in ancient times, has sealed his mission and his works with his own blood. And so has his brother Hiram. The reader in every nation will be reminded that the Book of Mormon and this Book of Doctrine and Covenants of the Church cost the best blood of the 19th century to bring them forth for the salvation of a ruined world. The Doctrine and Covenants is not a closed book. In addition to revelations given to the prophet Joseph Smith, it contains revelations received by his successors in the presidency of the church. These sacred revelations were received in answer to prayer in times of need and came out of real life situations involving real people. The prophet Joseph Smith and his successors sought for divine guidance and these revelations certify that they received it. In the revelations, the doctrines of the gospel are set forth 
with explanations about such fundamental matters as the nature of the Godhead, the origin of man, the purpose of mortality, the necessity for obedience, the need for repentance, the workings of the Holy Spirit, the ordinances and performances that pertain to salvation, the destiny of the earth, the future conditions of man after the resurrection and the judgment, the eternity of the marriage relationship, and the eternal nature of the family. Likewise, the gradual unfolding of the administrative structure of the church is shown with the calling of bishops, the first presidency, the council of the twelve and the seventy, and the establishment of other presiding offices and quorums. Finally, the testimony that is given of Jesus Christ, his divinity, his majesty, his perfection, his love, and his redeeming power make this book of great value to the human family and of more worth than all the riches of the earth. Search these commandments, for they are true and faithful, and the prophecies and promises which are in them shall all be fulfilled. What I, the Lord, have spoken, I have spoken, and I excuse not myself. And though the heavens and the earth pass away, my word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled. Whether by mine own voice or by the voice of my servants, it is the same. For behold and lo, the Lord is God, and the Spirit beareth record, and the record is true, and the truth abideth forever and ever. Amen.